I, I wanted to talk, touch on a subject that's not the funnest to talk about. Uh, it's not really, uh, I would say, like the most popular to talk about, but I want to really talk about mental health and really just 3D artists overcoming anxiety and depression. Uh, and, you know, uh, I, I know about Mike uh, Nash. He was a close friend of yours, and I'm yeah. sorry, just really for not only the, the 3D artist community, because he was a great guy and a great artist, yeah. um, but also, you know, on a personal level, as far as your friend. And then, you know, uh, to, to be honest, like what made me want to reach out to you was kind of that connection through Mike. And, you know, like I told you earlier, like Mike did reach out to me and, you know, me and him never really got to have a proper conversation. But, you know, when I actually heard that interview, you know, it was like, man, me and Mike have a lot of things in common. And I, it wasn't even the artwork. It was just like the depression, the anxiety, yeah, and yeah, a true. lot of things that I experienced. And, you know, one of my earliest YouTube videos was talking about, you know, working out and, and kind of uh, beating or managing your anxiety and your depression. What are your thoughts on that in, for 3D artists that have struggled? You know, because I've struggled, Mike struggled, and I'm not sure, you know, what, um, I guess, what issues you've had along the way, but what uh, general advice can you give to artists that are maybe, um, you know, faced with uh, mental health, anxiety, or depression? You know, yeah, that's a very uh, hard subject because I'm not a psychologist, right? But I know mm -hmm. exactly what you're talking about, about the anxiety, the stress. I mean, I, I lived in Iran. It was a lot of pressure. I was anxious. I was angry um, because of all the pressure and uh, I didn't have money. I didn't know what's going to happen to me in the future. And now I look at my past. I'm like, damn, I, I this is weird. Like if I saw myself at this time in the past, 15, 16 years ago, I would dream about to being here where I am now, you know, mm -hmm. and because I say this because I was anxious for, for several reasons. I, I, I wanted freedom. I wanted to be with someone, you know, the, the person that I wanted to, uh, I wanted to have a special person with me. My wife is special to me. You know, she's the best uh, person in my life, to be honest with you. And I got all of it and it helped me to improve my uh, anxiety and stress. And I, I had anxiety. I know exactly how it feels. Like I was getting panic attacks. I was getting stressed, especially when I left uh, my country without money, you know, mm. figuring out how to stay alive. Or um, at some point I had to sleep in the street for like 10 days, you know, on the seaside basically the only thing that kept me pushing is dreaming or wanting to change my life you know i couldn't let the anxiety or stress take over and push me down and because i have one chance to live you know what i mean one chance so i told myself and this is why what i actually told mike he told me i don't know how you keep doing this i don't know how you i'm like mike that's why we, we we got connected so easily because uh, we had similar roots. He 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 was like his parents are originally from Middle East. He was originally from Middle East like me, mm -hmm. and I, I understood him. He understood me, and I told him, Mike, look, here's the thing: I have one chance to live, right? Only one chance to live. So I will do anything I can to live one day without any stress in my life, just one day. Because I want to experience that one day, and that's enough. If I can experience it one, like one time, experience how it feels to not worry about anything, anything, deadline, work, debt, you know, buying crap, you know, living in a society where every everyone is about, oh, look at me, see how cool I am, or, um, you know, trying to, I don't know, you, you know what I mean? Like it's it's not a healthy society. Everyone is trying to dominate each other everyone is trying to it's uh, uh they, they have the a rain. term uh, uh keeping up with the joneses like you yeah you know, your, your, your neighbor buys you know a nice car and then yeah you, know, you, you want to outdo him so so you you over leverage your debt you know and yeah and you yeah just buy that and, car just to show off basically yep and dude like one of the things i learned i'll talk about a couple of things about anxiety taking care of my financial situation changed my anxiety because um i don't have to worry about money as much as I did in the past when I was younger. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to ever be in that situation again. You know, you heard this. Um, I, I'm not rich, but I'm going to tell you, it, like, it's a phrase, it's good. 
it says, I, I was poor and I'm rich now. I prefer to be rich. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I don't, I don't, I, I'm not rich yet, but I don't want to be where I was 20 years ago, you know, yep. because it's way more anxious. Like I, I think about it now, I'm like, how, how did I do that? How, how did I live like that? It doesn't make sense. How can a human being adopt to a hard life like that? You know, and I, I, mine wasn't as hard, you know, I'm looking at others. I'm like, how did these people are living their lives in a situation like that, you know? And it's 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 hard. It's it's it creates anxiety, creates stress. And um, for me, it was basically to uh, push forward and you know f get to to uh, to where I could actually live one day without anxiety, if that makes sense. And um, a lot of people give up give up fast because of pressure. I have I have pressure on me now. You know, we all we always have pressure because we choose to you know improve our lives and. And that's how you can do it. Uh, you know, you have to work, you have to have side hustles, you have to push. So that that creates a lot of anxiety, especially for us, because constantly sitting in front of computer all the time, this is not good. We are human beings. We are not made to sit. Yeah. That's why they're, they have these raising desks. That's why I, I walk at home all the time. Like when I do something, I work for like 30 minutes, go walk, just grab a tea or something. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not made to sit. That That, that creates anxiety. That creates a stressful life. It, this is from my experience. I'm not a psychologist, right? But um, put, I'll I put another disclaimer, man. By, by yeah. the time this is over, <laughs> your, your face is going to be covered with like asterisks. And, oh, these uh, are the things that I was telling. Yeah, these are the things I was telling Mike. You know, um, and uh, his situation was was not as good. Like it was hard, very hard. You know. And uh, he it was he was changing. Unfortunately, the accident happened. He took like I, I know you you watched the video. Mm -hmm. um, he took the wrong pill, or I I don't know if it was the wrong one, but whatever. Like the pill that he took built up in his liver and it co uh, collapsed his body at some point. And um, you know I don't think as human beings you should push yourself so far to get to a point where you have to take pills to do art. You know what I mean? To to I, calm I, I, yourself I, I, down. I think there's a lot of dynamics that are, in, I would say, with the field, the industry, and just being, like you said, at the end of the day in front of a computer, you know, so long. And, you know, to, to be a great artist, it's almost like you're at that, especially with Mike, you know, he was very driven and he... Yeah, he was amazing, man. He was very the unique. Stuff he, the, the, the stuff he pulled off, you know, is, is very, um, uh, very remarkable. And, yeah. you know, as an art, artist, you kind of like to be to that level, you kind of got to be on the edge of obsession, right? Of just yes. being all in and kind of you know having that, that focus. Yeah, if you can't put all in. And last time when we spoke, he was like, I told him, Mike, you need to do more of this. He said, I can't. It's hard. It's too. I'm like, why? He says, it, it takes time. No one sees it. Clients don't care. It was hard for him, right? Because he mm -hmm. loved his work so much. And whatever he did, um, Everyone wanted more. Or when he worked with a client, they were like, some a company hired him to do freelance work for them, contract work, and they hired him as a concept artist, 3D concept artist to design a robot. And then they were giving him so much feedback that one day he called me. He was like frustrated and he was upset. He said, "They're not. They hired me to do this job because of my profession, and they're not letting me to finish this. And the contract is like this." If I if I stop it, I have to pay the money and blah 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 blah. It was a, it was a bad situation, and I'm like Mike, just stop it, cancel it. They don't need you. They just want someone who can do production work, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. They just picked you, they picked the wrong person. You know, when when if you're if you work with the right client, um, that's what I'm trying to say. It becomes life becomes better. You know, if you if you value your work so much, 